Welcome to another Gene Key Hexagram Contemplation. This week we are transiting Gene Key 20, Hexagram 20. The shadow is superficiality, the gift is self-assuredness, and the city is presence. The hexagram is seeing. Superficiality. This is basically about a lack of awareness and our reliance on our minds ultimately to make decisions in our life. Again, with these shadows, gifts in the city, we're looking at a spectrum of frequency or uh, ability to hold consciousness. So at the shadow level, our ability to be conscious, to be self-aware is limited. And a really great question Richard Red asks in the audio is, how many moments in your day, in your weekend, you just had the long weekend, how many moments in your weekend were you totally present? And how many were you absent? Now, absent isn't mean you're not physically there, but absence can simply be being in your mind in the past or worrying about the past or thinking about the future, trying to make decisions about the future versus being in the now with all your awareness, with your full presence. The presence, ultimately, he calls it the presence because once you reach that level at the Siddic level, Instead of being in our victim consciousness, we're in the consciousness of unity, that we are all connected. So ultimately, at every level of the city, no matter what gene key hexagram we're in, we're basically talking about unity consciousness and the dissolving of the separate self. The gift of self-assuredness, the pathway to this presence, and Richard Rudd speaks about how there is presence in each level. We do have presence in some moments of our shadow states, those moments of you know, watching fireworks or the sun rising and, and or you know, special moments with children, whatever it may be, drinking your tea or your coffee. The gift level of self-assuredness isn't about our will to do things or to cultivate confidence from following certain steps. It's really about our ability to surrender, to let go of our mind being the authority for making decisions in our lives, to surrender to flow, I just made a video about letting go and surrender to flow where I reference Michael Singer and David Hawkins who literally wrote a book about letting go and Michael Singer who's written books about uh, the surrender experiment it's called. So you can check that video out if you want to kind of dive deeper into the letting go. But ultimately the letting go as it's referenced in the gene key is letting go of our mind and all the shoulds and and I ought to do this, I should do that. And the fear that comes up when we deviate from the status quo or from what we feel we should do. And the hexagram, it, the seeing speaks of, of you know, seeing, seeing only fear. And when we, when we do that, we close ourselves down. We close our senses off, all of our senses off to reacting or responding to our environment or people in appropriate ways and along with like putting the priority of our minds as the decision maker in our past we have also put the priority of our sight as the main sense but many people are now aware that you know the spectrum of light humans can only see a very small percentage of that compared to what does exist and a lot of this surrender to flow and, and being able to have the courage and the confidence to let go has to do with trusting these invisible frequencies that are not known to the eyes. And 
a lot of times if we are only trusting what our eyes see we're missing a lot <laughs> we're missing a big the big picture and i'll finish with this the a lot of systems but particularly because i'm talking about the gene key system here it speaks about the evolution from our minds as the the big boss to the solar plexus and we're having all these mutations in our solar plexus. A lot of people are talking about different physical sensations they're feeling in their stomach as we are literally evolving right now, like this is it. And as we evolve from our heads to our guts, to the solar plexus, we really need to step into the gift of this gene key, this self-assuredness that the universe really is working for us. When we surrender to that and surrender our mind, surrender our conditioned beliefs about how we think the world works, it actually works in much more mysterious and magical ways. I think that's, that's it for today. That's all I want to share on this contemplation. I'm, I may come back with another video in this one. I feel like there's so much to talk about. Um, I'm wearing my other YouTube channel, the We Ship. It's literally called the subtitle Surrender to Flow. And this has been my life experiment for a number of years now. What does this mean growing up being very controlling as a person, as a young one, trying to control my environment to feel good? I took myself down a path that ultimately led to dis-ease in my mental body, my physical body, and ultimately into life situations, circumstances, relationships that were not healthy for me. And in the collapse of that life and ultimately the letting go of that version of myself, I have committed and dedicated my life to understanding embodying flow surrender so i do feel like i could talk a lot about this and that's all i'm going to share for now and i do invite you over to the we ship channel if you're interested in a really raw authentic organic journey that is documenting not only my evolution my business partner's evolution but the collective as well as so we dive deep into conversing about the expansion of consciousness and our interconnectedness. I'll see you in the next video.